Welcome back. So we're going to continue right where we left off in the last video. In number 5, we have to write some code to allow us to change the direction of the label text. But first, I'm noticing that my text has a line underneath it. A possible reason for that is that we put the pen down when we drew the y and the x axes, but we never picked it back up. And in the lab, we're told that having the pen down when using a label could cause some undesirable effects, and I guess this is one of them. So let's go back to our draw axes block, and let's make sure to pick up the pen once we're done drawing the x-axis. So I'll use a pen up all the way at the bottom. I'm going to hit apply and hit OK. And then I'm actually going to run that block just so we draw the axes, and now I know my pen is up. And uh, I want to clear the stage, so let me clear the stage, then I'll draw the axes. And now when I draw the label, you'll see, actually it's kind of hard to see because it's off the stage, but you'll see that there's no line. Let me just clear everything and go to the middle, and when I click on the label, you'll see that there's no line underneath. So for number five, you'll see that the command block for changing the direction has already been created for us in this starter file, but now we have to code up the inside. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the label block, and I could see that there's a direction parameter in there that I'm going to have to use. So why don't we use a block that allows us to change the direction of a sprite? And one of those can be found in the motion palette. Let's have it point in that specific direction. So what we can do is we can take this direction parameter and we can put it right inside point and direction. So depending on the direction or the number that the user types in when they're using the block, that will have the sprite point in that specific direction. Then we can bring our label block into this updated label block. So I'm going to move this down for just a second and I'm going to bring in my original label block that doesn't have anything having to do with direction. And for the text, I'm going to bring in the parameter, text. And for size, I'm going to bring in the parameter size. Now I think this should work. So I'm going to hit apply and I'm going to test it out. So let's see. If I clear the stage and go to the middle, and with a direction of zero, it's going to be pointed up, it looks like. So with a direction of zero, this should write China, and it does. If I change the direction to 90, it should write China to the right. Perfect. If I change the direction to 270, it's going to be China upside down towards the left. Perfect. And I think that's almost everything. That's, that is everything. Oh wait, no, 180 degrees. Or 180 for the direction will have China going down. Now I know like China over here is written like on top of each other, but you can see that the direction's working correctly. In number six, we have to develop code for the draw bar block. Just one block. Just like in the brick wall, in order to draw a bar, we're going to draw a thick line without any rounded edges. So let me just double check inside my settings, this little gear menu, to make sure that flat line ends is checked off. So just like when we drew a brick, we have to take the input parameters width and height inside of draw bar, and we have to draw a line with that specific width of that height. I actually wonder if we should use the move block to draw the bar, or if we should be a little bit more explicit and use the change y by block, since the bars are going to be vertical. So to draw the bar, I'm going to, I'm actually going to need the label block again, because we're going to draw a label and then we're going to draw a bar. Actually, let me scroll down a little bit so you guys can see what it looks like. So number six is what I'm on right now. So let's go over to the pen and let's bring in a label with this text of this size, and then let's set the pen's size equal to the width, and the line's height is going to be determined by that height parameter. Now this almost looks ready to go, but the thing is I never put my pen down, so I should bring in a pen down and a pen up over here. So let's make sure that when we draw a bar we put the pen down first, and then we pick up the pen as soon as we're done. Let's see if this works. I'm going to hit apply, and I'm in my draw bar, I'm going to have the label Germany, size 12, width 25, height 120. Let's see what happens if I clear the stage and I click on this. Oh, so we're kind of close, but it looks like the bar was drawn towards the bottom, and we want it pointed up. So maybe what we can do is instead of using my simple label block, I will use my more advanced one, and I will change, let's see, I will change the direction to make sure that it's always pointed up. 
uh, and pointed up will be zero. So the direction has to be zero. The label will still be labeled. The label size or the size will be label size. And now I can get rid of this simpler label block. I'm going to hit apply. I'm going to clear the stage and I'm going to try again. And it works. Although there's no space after Germany. So I kind of want to add a little bit of a space in there. Let me see. Let me just fix that up. So before I draw the bar, maybe after I draw the label, but before I put the pen down. So actually, I'm going to move this over. I'm going to have the label in front. Remember, because we don't want the pen down when the label gets drawn. So I'm going to move pen down over here. But just before I actually put the pen down, I'm going to move, let's say, 10 steps. So just going in order, let me follow this step by step. I'm going to create a label. Then I'm going to move 10 steps. Then I'm going to put the pen down. Then I'm going to set the pen size to the width. Then I'm going to move that many steps. And that should be my bar. And then I'll lift up the pen. So let's hit apply. And let's try this one final time and see if this works. Looks pretty good. In number seven, we have to use our draw bar block that we just created and create a draw bars block with it. In the instructions, we're told to give the tallest bar in the data collection a height of 240 and set everything else proportionally smaller to that. Here's where our math skills and the max of list block will both come into play. Actually, we don't really need to think too hard because they do provide us with the math formula, but I want to explain how they arrived at this formula. If we find the largest number in the data set first, then we can set that as a denominator for our proportion, the max data value. We can then place every other value in the numerator and set this equal to a proportion so that our max value will be set to 240 and then we can solve for the other values for x. But how do we use the max of list block if our emissions data is a list of data records, each of which is a list containing two lists, a label and a value? So here's where the map block comes into play. The map block along with our selector value from data record is the answer. If we click it, we can see that it reports just the list of values. But then how do we use our max of list block if our emissions data, if I open it up and look at it, is just a list of data records. And each data record is just a list of a label and a value, so two lists inside of each one. We don't need to know the labels when we're looking just for the max value. So here's where we use map. If you want to learn more about the map block, you can go over to the variables palette and you can right click on map and hit help. And you'll see that it says compute a function of each list item. So what map does is it takes that input, that reporter block, and it runs it on each item of the list. Whenever you get stuck and you don't know how a block works, try right clicking on it and hitting help and seeing what the documentation says. So in our case, if we use the map block with the reporter value from data record, which just reports back the second item of the data record, if we look at it quickly, you can see it right there. It reports the second item. It's an abstraction to get the value out. So if we run this on every single item of the emissions data, then we're just going to get a list of all of the values. And once we have that list of all values, then we can use our max of list and get the largest value so that we can figure out our proportions. So this means that when the map block is done, we're going to report back a list of all of the values from the data, from the emissions data, and none of the labels. So let's create it. Let's run map. And we're going to map the value from data record. So that's in the operators palette. And we're going to map that. Let me just make the stage a little bit smaller. We're going to map this over our CO2 emissions data. OK, now I'm running out of space here. So let me actually uh, clear some of this up. Let me bring this map block right here. So when I click on this, it's going to run value from data record on every single item of the CO2 emissions data. And it should return back a list of all these values. And now from this list of values, I can use my max of list throw map in there, and now I can get the largest value from the entire emissions data, which happens to be 8715, which is China's CO2 emission data.
It looks like it's working correctly, so I'm going to stop here for this video and finish everything else in part 3.